Hi, welcome back. Oops. Did you think that I wasn't here? I'm here, okay? Now, I'm sure that you are thinking about Sokotoa and you're like, wow, this is so review. pre is so easy. But I'm going to warn you, this is an easy section kind of review, okay? Even the next part too, right? Special right triangle, it's such old stuff. If you took in the SATs, SAT says, hey, here you go. Here are the formulas for the special right triangles. And what are the special right triangles? It's 30. Oh, sorry. 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degree triangles, or 45, 45, 90 degree triangles, okay? These are special right triangles. Why? Because they have a special ratio property, right? All right, so let's look at the first one, the green triangle. It's, of course, a right triangle. Of course, it's a right triangle here as well. Well, let's actually think whether this could be, the green triangle could be this one or this one. Smarty pants, of course. If it's 45, 45, and 90 across an angle, right? It has to be that they have to be equal angle, equal angle, and equal sides. I saw these triangles, right? Okay, so this is guy, maybe it's an N, length, leg. And this guy, that means also has to be an N length leg. The other guy is a hypo, right? This guy's the longest, the longest. Wait, let's actually put equal, but it's 45 degrees. They're congruent, so they're 45 degrees. N, N. And what about the hypotenuse you say? Well, they have this special property. If you actually perform the Pythagorean theorem, it turns out that it becomes N times root 2. Once again, if this is all reviewed too, you could go on and try to do some of the exercises, okay? But remember, I'm always going to teach it. I'm always going to teach it like it's your first time seeing it, okay? Let's look at the next one. Next one is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And can you see which angle has to be 30? So purposely, you should too always draw it so it looks small, like 30. So this guy is your 30 degree triangle, 30 degrees. Where is your bigger angle? It's right here, the 60 degree angle, okay? I always like to work with the smallest side. How do you, how can you determine the smallest side? Not just by looking, but you must focus on the angle. Look across the smallest angle. It's 30 degrees, right? So across the 30 degrees is your N. Now, who's the largest? The largest side is always across from the 90 degrees, right? So you know that it's across from the right angle, and it's always double the shortest side. Double, okay? Now, what about the uh, medium side, right? There's small, medium, and large, right? So the medium side would be, it's the small times, oh, sorry, small guy, little guy, times root 3. Small guy times root 3, okay? Uh, again, of course, twice n is larger than n times root 3. Think about why. Think about the quantity of root 3, okay? Then you'll be able to answer your own question. Now, remember, on the SAT, they give you these properties because they want you to do things with it, not know this, actually, because you should know this. If you've never seen this before, come talk to me, okay? But otherwise, you can just learn it with me, okay? Here, let's try some exercises here. Again, some of these exercises are straight from your book, so make sure you're the, the, looking at your notes as you're working on your homework, okay? Now, find six trigonometric functions of theta. Whoa, what the factor? What is going on here? But you know what I forgot to do, you guys? I forgot to tell you on this triangle that this guy is your one. This guy is your right angle, right? And also what I forgot to tell you that this guy is also theta, okay? And so these guys are congruent. So if this guy is your N and this guy is your N, identify what special right triangle this guy is. This guy is your 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. That means the ratio is N, N, N root 2, right? Okay? So think about how you achieve this here. Okay? Think about how you achieve that. But again, our question, ultimately, we want to find the six trick functions, right? So we want to find sine. Theta, sine, cosine, tangent, and then all the reciprocals, okay? So let's first thing we have to do is find all the like, because we need the opposite and the adjacent, which are the same, shame, okay? But how did you get the one? Isn't it n root 2 that equaled 1, right? We had to multiply something by root 2 in order for us to get 1. So what do we do? n must be 1 over root 2. Hey, nudge someone next to you as to why this has to be true, okay? Okay, but remember, I'm going to repeat it again. We know for shizzle, the longest side is always root 2 times the shortest side. Here, we have the longest side. Ask yourself, how did you get here? Oh, I multiplied something by root 2 to get to 1. 
and here's what I have. Okay, now if you want, if you want, you could actually rationalize this, but for this case, I won't. So that means your sine, oh, so that means this guy is one root, one over root two. This guy is also one over root two. So go ahead and do your sine, cosine, and tangent, and all your reciprocals, okay? Let's do one together. Sine of theta, remember, it doesn't matter which, th wait, you guys, it doesn't matter which angle you look at, right? It doesn't matter which one has the arrow next to it because they're always going to produce the same shame, right? So it's going to be one over root two, right? Which is the opposite of the angle theta, either one, okay? Over one, which is just one over root two, okay? Or root two over two. Sorry, I'm going to actually do this root two over two. Ah, I can see that this triangle, if it was in a circle or in STD form, that the radius is one. I'm making some connections here. If it doesn't make any sense, that's totally okay. Okay, cosine is also going to be one over root two or root two over two. Think about why. And you can just do it your own method too. And this guy is opposite over adjacent. Oh, uh, oh, uh, right. Opposite over adjacent, right? So it's going to be just one because it's one over root two over one over root two. I won't finish the uh, secant, um, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, okay? How about the next one? Next one, it tells you that this guy is theta, right? Well, I have to tell you that this guy is not just, this guy is actually 60 degrees and this guy is a right angle. And then you can assume that the theta is 30 degrees, okay? So this is a spatial right triangle, 30, 60, 90 degrees. 30, 60, and 90. Okay, that means you know, for shizzle, how this came about. This guy is the shortest, right? Short, medium, and this is a large E, right? How did the large come about? If this guy is N, this guy is 2N, this guy is N root 3, right? We don't know the shorty. That means... 1 equal twice whatever the short guy was. So n must have been a half. That's across from 30. So I'm going to erase this. I'm going to put a 30. I'm sorry. I erased too much. I'm going to put a half here. Right? The shortest side is half, and we got it through this. Okay? Next, if we know that half is the short side, and we already have the large side, right? How do you get the middle? Well, the medium... Okay, so this guy is your first thing, second thing is your medium, across the 60 is your medium, right? It's just one half times root three. Oh, sorry, this is so ugly. Okay, one half times root three, which is root three over two. Okay, and you would really help if you actually label this. Root three over two like that. And then go ahead and do your sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. Sine of theta. Well, which angle? Well, theta is this guy that we're talking about. So what's the sine of that? O, O, opposite over hypotenuse, right? So it's going to be 1 half over 1. Well, what's 1 half over 1? 1 half over 1 is just 1 half. Uh, I'm going to write it in red. What's cosine, right? So it's adjacent. But make sure you know, adjacent is not the hypotenuse. It's actually special, right? So you have to go to the adjacent root 3 over 2 over hypotenuse, which makes it root 3 over 2. And tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. Uh oh opposite over adjacent. Small over large, medium. Small over medium. <gasps> that one's tricky dicky, so I'm going to go 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, which becomes, well, I'll just show it like for rails, but you don't have to show me all this work. So it's going to be 1 over root 3. Because the 2's cancel out, right? And Or you could write this as root 3 over 3 for me after you rationalize, okay? Now, uh, we're just practicing with, Pitha uh, not Pythagorean theorem, uh, special right triangles, but also you can see how trig functions are used here, sine, cosine, tangent, because these are all right triangles, okay? All right, we're going to get tricky dicky now, okay? Number 45 is tricky dicky from your straight, from, straight from your textbook. So if you have numbers like 44 due on your homework or 46, make sure you look at number 45 example. All right, find the acute angle theta that satisfies the given condition, given both theta, given theta in both degrees and radians. No calculators. We can't use our calculators. So we know for sure secant of theta is 2. That's really weird. Okay. Okay, secant of theta is 2. Um, if you want to draw this uh, triangle, you can. But I like to think, I don't like to think in reciprocal identities. 
I like reciprocal trig functions. I like to think in normal. So that means cosine must be the reciprocal of that. So it's half. That really helps. And then you want to maybe sketch it out. Oh, sorry, guys. I want to make a beautiful triangle for you. Here we go. Okay, more beautiful. So we have theta here. Ah, oh, this is not good because you should draw it the way it should look. Okay, so theta is a half. Theta is what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Theta is here. I mean, cosine of theta is, right? So we know it's 1 over 2. That's a better drawing because it really exemplifies the fact that the adjacent is 1 and then it's double that, which makes the hypotenuse, okay? Okay, then they want us to find the actual, uh, oh, so we found it? No, but wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, what can we conclude? Find the acute angle. We need to find this angle that satisfies the given equation. Given, so we need to know, wait, wait, we need to know what's the angle measurement here? Whoa, 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 okay? How do we know that, right? Wow, hmm. Well, let's see. Let's keep, just keep going and let's co complete the Pythagorean theorem. So we know it's gonna be one square plus whatever this guy is, n square is gonna equal two squared. So it's going to be n squared equals 4 minus 1, so 3. So n is equal to root 3. Wait a minute. So n is root 3, so that means our triangle looks like this, you guys. Watch this. Theta is here, 1, root 3, and 2. Wait a minute. What are these ratios from? 1, 2, root 3. Oh! Oh. Okay. This is a special right triangle. So sometimes you're going to have to come up with your own conclusions like this. It doesn't tell you, hey, hey it's a 36 degree triangle. you got to conclude, okay? So if you know that this is a special right triangle, this guy is short, medium, and this guy is uh, big, right? That means theta must be what? Well, this is the shortest side. So this guy has to be 30, and this guy has to be 60. Okay? See, so if you understand that, if you don't, you could call me, or you could actually email me, and I'll meet you on Zoom, and we can discuss this coming through, uh, come during uh, autonomous, or you could ask us, you could ask your best favorite neighbor. Okay, all right, let's move on to number twenty on your homework too. Evaluate without a calculator. Again, no calculators, homies. Okay, now this in this case tangent of pi over four. You can either think in degrees or think in radian. But remember, I'm trying to make you guys think in radian, right? So pi over 4. You could also travel if you want. They want, you guys, if it says evaluate without a calculator, evaluate simply means to find the ratio. So O over A. This right here is an angle. And this distinction is going to be extremely important later. So again, you're trying to find the ratio when it says to evaluate, okay? Opposite over adjacent, but you're given the angle. So I'm going to travel pi over 4, pi over 4, okay? I'm going to travel pi over 4 because this is pi over 4, which is 45 if you'd like to think about it. You can write that for now. That means this guy has to be 45 degrees, right? Okay, so what does the opposite and the adjacent have to be? And I guess this is a good question for me. For you to think about, as I say, okay, so tangent of pi over 4 has to be 1. Why? And you should be able to answer because, and I'll leave it at that, okay? It's a good test question, too. I could be like, okay, how did this chain come to the conclusion that it's 1 based on the sketch and based on what's given, okay? All right, good luck. Bye.